Hey, we're going deep today. You have experienced a demon. No, like an actual demon. All right, so these are the top ways to spot a demon and to see devil possession in people. Let's get to the show. Hey, thanks for checking out part two and we are getting right into demonic possession, demonic oppression, and demonic manifestation. So what a manifestation is, is just when something takes form or shape. And in this case, we are covering just biblical character traits of people that are demon possessed, but also the demonically oppressed. So just a distinction between the two, right? As a carrier of the Holy Spirit, you have been baptized um, and been reborn as listed out in John 4 in the Bible, I believe. It's definitely in the Gospel of John. And as that, you cannot be demonically possessed because you have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. But that does not mean that the devil cannot influence you and make demonic suggestions and this is just uh, from the new testament when it says that the spirit of the antichrist is already in the world so we see this in the um book of john when it says that the devil put the suggestion to kill and sell off um jesus to judas so that is demonic suggestion and oppression so that means you have the indwelling of the holy spirit but does not mean you cannot be influenced and suggested just like eve in the garden of eden or just like us um, but you have to give in to sin and um, give in to disobedience rebellion and witchcraft right um, so the more that you sin the more susceptible you are to like legitimate um, the satanic and the demonic but you can't um, essentially um, be possessed of a demon right so demonic oppression um just like soul ties generational curses and so on and so forth uh that is different than demonic possession so this is um where spirits not being the holy spirit demons devils unclean spirits whoever um can definitely possess and not even um solely suggest but also take over and influence they even speak. So we can um, see this in the scriptures as well. So we're gonna start with just some practical applications when you can see demonic manifestations in people. So we're gonna start with um, speaking. Um, it's gonna sound weird, but um, so when it comes to demonic manifestations, you need to note who is manifesting by the spirit of god that's on the inside of you so very practical applications that you see this have you ever noticed when you enter a room that it seems as if the conversation just became way more sinful or way more cursing or way more sexual why is that and we can see this in the scriptures when it comes to jesus Demons would always be attracted to him and begin to manifest and speak. And Jesus would never allow them to speak. So this is um, twofold, right? It is the presence of God, but also the glory of God that calls people to manifest, but also cause people to react and be attracted. So you can have someone that is demonically possessed right um, and in short God said when he created man he breathed his spirit into all flesh um, creating us from the dust so what you can have is that human man or woman their spirit calling out to God right so they actually want to be freed from this thing and so when it comes to the presence and spirit of God they begin manifesting 
through attraction, like following, right? Um, being attracted by the spirit and the glory, just the presence of God, right? But also when it comes to like cursing, sexual content, sinfulness, they also begin to speak um, just from the presence of God and the glory of God. So a lot of people will be like, oh, um, I just feel like I attract um, this certain type of person or these certain type of people. But what can um, be happening is just a, um, a liberation um, taking place. So. The, you're supposed to cast out this demon in the name of the Lord. Um, and when it comes to the book of James, why do demons call out and why do demon possessed people call out? It says that um, if you believe in God, good, even demons believe, right? So when um, people were encountering the disciples, the apostles and Jesus, they would just begin um, to call out. Um, so we see this in the scriptures. Okay, so the first example we see of this is in Mark 1, 34. And it says, And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out devils, and suffered not the devils to speak, because they knew him. So um, we have in the New Testament where it says that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. So why will um, demons or demon possessed people begin to manifest in cussing or sinfulness or sexual content? It's because they know Jesus as Lord. And because, um, G um, not <laughs> Jesus, but demons see in the spiritual realm. They um, see your position, they see how you operate, and they see you are a carrier of that spirit. So if you think, oh, they're reacting to me, no. They are reacting to the spirit of God that is within you. So be very mindful of who gets louder, um, who cuss more, who gets attracted, um, because it can well, well be a demon in disguise. All right, next, we are going to cover true statements from demons. There's just this false uh, dichotomy that if you are of the devil, the satanic, or the demonic, you cannot say true statements. That is untrue. The devil tempted Jesus with scriptures. And also, um, there's a false dichotomy or a false narrative of if I am a Christian, I will discern demons or devils in other people. That is not true. And we are going to see this in Acts 16, where Paul is being followed by a demon-possessed woman for three days. His spirit is grieved and he cast out the demon. All right. So, and it came to pass as... We went to prayer. A certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination went, uh, met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul in us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. All right. So you have a woman with a spirit of di divination. What a spirit of divination is, is witchcraft. And so this is like horoscopes, zodiac signs, um, tarot card readings, um, all those, like all this other stuff. Um, that is like perverted um, spirituality, universalism, all that weird karma, meditation, yoga, Hindu stuff. That is the spirit of divination where you're messing with demonic forces to basically tell the future, do prophecy, um, which is a perverted gift of something that is true. So this is how you could tell the difference between a holy gift in a demonic gift is that a holy gift is a pure thing. A demonic gift 
is the perverted version or the alternative to something that is true in God. All right, so you have this woman possessed of a demon, and what does she say? She says that these men are men of God, a true statement. And she says they have come to give us salvation. Why? Because again, that manifestation that we spoke of earlier, who gets loud when you come into a room as a carrier in a temple of the Holy Spirit, unclean spirits, all right? But it says that Paul was grieved and he says, in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her and the demon came out of her. So you have this woman following them for many days. So what's happening here? We really can't make speculation. I can't say Paul did not know that she was demon possessed. Maybe he did know, maybe he didn't. But what can be said is that when the spirit is grieving you, you have to acknowledge these things. So what's um, grief? It could be so many things. If someone, I don't want um, this to <laughs> be, I need wisdom here. I need spiritual maturity. Cause people are gonna use this so loosely and be like, I didn't like this person. I knew they had a demon. Eh, it's 50, 50. You may be right or you may be biased. And you need to grow up. Um, but I do think um, just personally what I experience is um, sickness in my body. It's like when I get around someone, my spirit is greed and I don't feel well. And so you have to be very sensitive to these sort of things or um, it's called unctions, unctions from the Holy Spirit, which are listed in Ephesians three or four, I think it's Ephesians four, um, unctions from the spirit. When the spirit is like, hey, don't touch that person. Um, it's a guard from the transferring of unclean spirits. It's just warning you. You can't be demon possessed, but you could definitely be demon um, influenced or suggested, all right? So just be very we um, aware of things that are grieving your spirit, like um, entertainment. The Holy Spirit is holy and pure. Uh, this is in John. The Holy Spirit has come to rebuke and correct the world of sin, of righteousness and of judgment, right? So God is holy. No unholy thing will enter into the kingdom of God, all right? So you need to watch your entertainment that's opening you up to the satanic and the demonic spirits uh, that are unclean. The Holy Spirit is consistent from the Old Testament to the New Testament. He does not change. Things that would grieve God's spirit in the Old Testament will grieve God's spirit in the New Testament and will grieve God's spirit now. Sinfulness. This is all listed out in Galatians 5. Boom. This is all listed out for you in Galatians 5. But if you be led of the spirit and are not of the law, now the works of the flesh are manifest. Manifest. <laughs> Which are these? Adultery. Fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, <laughs> hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, re revelings, and such like this. Of this which I tell you before, as I have also told you in past times, that they which told you uh, the, that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. If you are following social media, music, movies, television that are glorifying this crap, the spirit should be grieved unless you are led by the flesh and then you have a sin tolerance because you have familiar spirits. You can't cast out a demon that you are entertaining yourself. If you enjoy this stuff and the Holy Spirit is not grieved, you should be worried. Conviction from the Holy Spirit grows with spiritual maturity, yes. But you can stagnate that by sinful activity within yourself. You cannot compartmentalize ignoring God on things. You ignore him on small things, it will grow into big things. Small foxes 
ruin the whole bunch or something that's a proverb. So be aware of this. All right. Next manifestation of demonic spirits and the satanic self harm and self mutilation. People that are demonically oppressed or possessed will harm themselves or others. So be aware of people that are harming animals and um, just different seditions. I believe you see this in Mark 9 22 a demon possessed um, boy um, is brought to Jesus by his father so we're going to outline this and we're starting in verse 20 and they brought him unto him and when he saw him straightway the spirit tear him and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming and he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. And oft times it hath cast him into the fire, into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with him, in tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. All right, and important thing to acknowledge with demonic manifestation, that the disciples were unable to cast out the demon. And what did um, Jesus say in response? He said, how long will I be with this generation of unbelief and unbelieving? A lack of faith and unbelieving will not allow you to cast out like um, demons. And even Jesus says, um, this thing only comes out by prayer and fasting. So it's either this level of demon, I'm unsure, or this level of faith to cast out this type of demon only comes out with prayer and fasting. So you have to be in prayer and fasting to do like certain like miracles and demon casting out. Um, but when it comes to manifestation, we're talking about the harming of self and self mutilation that we see. It says that the, the demon begins to tear away. So you can see demonic manifestation with just like supernatural strength being able to like lift up people or like levitation people be able to move being demonically possessed or oppressed and you see this also in Luke 9 42 even while the boy was approaching the demon slammed him into the ground in convulsion but Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit healed the boy and um yeah other stuff all right so um if someone is cutting themselves, self-harm, choking, um, attempts at suicide, those are manifestations of demonic possession or demonic oppression. And just because you have demonic suggestion doesn't mean you have to act on it. It doesn't mean you're demon possessed. So the next experience of demonic manifestation comes from Mark 5. All right. At the start. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into a country of gatherings. And when he was come out of the ship immediately, there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because that he had been off bound with feathers and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder, by him and the feathers broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshiped him and cried with a loud voice and said, what I have to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. And he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him, which that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there 
were there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd violently ran down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. All right. So when it comes to demonic possession, demonic oppression, and the satanic, you have to be aware of the manifestation when it comes to the morbid, essentially. You have a man that was interested, uh, well, not interested, he was among the tombs, among the dead bodies, right? So we see um, he was not kept with chains. That's where that supernatural power and strength I was telling you earlier, um, again, in reference, you see another manifestation that he was attracted to Jesus, that they began to speak and call out to him that he is the son of God um, because of that manifestation. But you have to um, be aware of like, hey, why do people begin to talk about death or suicide or darknesses or dying? That is another spiritual manifestation. And um, with, in conjunction to the morbid, another spiritual manifestation is, I don't have a better term than this, but um, leaps in personality and personality switches. So um, I went, like slick, I would say schizophrenia, multi personality disorder. But if you can see this in your practical life, um, if you know fits of aggression, fits of violence, fits of anger. Ladies, I used the example when a guy hits on you and he's really nice and then he switches and then um, he's not so nice and he becomes angry and enraged, right? Um, this man had 12, not 12, 2,000 demons in him. That's multiple spirits, multiple um, personalities, right? So if you see someone just triggered where they can just go from zero to 100 so quick. And I'm not talking about just lack of immaturity or whatever it is. I'm talking about real laughing, crying, or whatever those type of fits or um, people doing things in different type of fits and not remembering and like coming into a regular conversation so quickly from this. A lot of people like to say chemical imbalances, but if Jesus is a true healer, it says in um, um, all these scriptures of casting out demons or the apostles or the disciples casting out demons, it says there's a conjunction or a pairing of healing and casting out demons. They cut, they're almost interwoven with one another. And so this is another demonic manifestation that you need to take note of is different fits of personality or emotion um, waves that shifts. Shifts in personalities and emotions are demonic manifestations. They should not be that quick. It's really weird. It's like um, if you can really compare it to not consciousness when it comes to being awake and asleep but entering and leaving of the spirits it's like man you are talking very soberly now but just a minute ago you were not <laughs> and so you will be confused and be like oh my gosh i think they're right i think they're okay and they're not do not believe that and remember that the gospel of Jesus Christ is Jesus has come um, to set us free from demonic possession, depression, oppression, and um, manifestations. So the spirit of God is the spirit of liberty. Um, so freedom uh, from the dominion and authority of the devil. And um, he ha Jesus has come to judge the world and give us either eternal life or eternal damnation. So... The devil's demons and anything that does not look like God will be in the pit of fire, um, not um, being reborn and not receiving eternal life from Jesus. Um, so remember, we have power and dominion to cast out unclean spirits in the name of Jesus Christ. And the New Testament says that you should test every spirit if it be of God and how. 
um, every spirit that confessed that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh and rose from the dead is from God. So, yo, be aware. Stay away from those unclean spirits. All right, so thank you for watching part two when it comes to the demonic, the satanic, demonic oppression, demonic um, possession, and the manifestations. Um, let me know if you want a part three with more practical applications and just my personal experiences doing, deliver <laughs> doing deliverance ministries, doing um, street evangelism, and basically prayer teams when it comes to healing evangelism and like just a bunch of real life stories. So again, um, be aware of demonic manifestations when it comes to what opens you up um, to the satanic, demonic, um, and witchcraft. So that sin, rebellion, manipulation um, is another manifestation of the demonic. So um, it takes different forms. It takes the forms of um, being morbid, self-harm, self-mutilation, shifts in personality, uh, fits of anger and rage, and all that other stuff that I listed in the video. So thank you um, for watching, and we're, we'll go into generational curses, um, soul ties, and um, deliverance, how to cast out demons in the next video. Thanks for watching.